Well, we happen to be out here at uh, Leotis uh, Beach and, and Don Goodridge home here. And I think this is 450, isn't it? Yes. 450 uh, Sunnybrook here in Florence, Kentucky. And uh, this is the Christmas house in Florence and in Boone County. You might as well say in Northern Kentucky. <laughs> NKY, uh, Northern Kentucky, the home of the ark, answers to Genesis, and my old Kentucky home. Oh, the sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the children at play. The corn tops ripe and the meadows are in bloom, and the birds make music all the day. Now right here we see my old Kentucky home live and in person. And the two individuals here, Leotis and, and Don Goodridge, Leotis Beach. And just look around the room here, folks, and see the Christmas decorations and the beauty of the whole place. And you'll see the citizens that love their state, their city, and their country. And uh, I'm proud to call them friends. And they've been going to the Robinson Family Singers, I guess, uh, let's see here, probably for three decades. Probably. Somewhere between 25 and 30 years. I Absolutely. Think. And I remember seeing them. <laughs> and yep. they probably remember me singing my yes. old Kentucky home. Good Lord, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, there's Don coming out. How Don you doing? I'm doctoring up a phone book. Sorry. <laughs> well, now tell us a little bit about this room here, the two of you. Well, what he, do we got in here, Don? He can tell you better Come than Come back. I. <laughs> I'd say you, you tell him. You can do it better than I. What, tell, what tell me you want to know? Well, what's the sum of the memories? Of course, this is all memories, isn't it? Yeah. Memories and symbols and uh, uh, items. And they say a picture says a thousand words. Well, so, a lot of it's memories. This little fella belonged to Elsa, the lady we took care of for 18 months. She used to talk to his butt. <laughs> He always gets put out at Christmas because he's got a Christmas scarf on. Ah, oh, we got a corn husk tree that a lot of different ones have given us. The corn husk. Yeah. The one on the wall is a White House. The ornaments uh, from the White House Society. Uh, the little uh, what Anna Lee down there. Mrs. Claus is scared of the mouse. Yes. I see Did the little see mouse, the mouse down there. Yeah, there's a mouse right here. Right there in the front, isn't there? Right yeah, there. a little yeah. gray mouse. And she's scared of him. <laughs> she's well, frightened. I can't say I blame her. <laughs> <laughs> He's down there looking about things. And, <laughs> and uh, let's see if I get a little close-up of that little mouse. Yeah, there he is. Isn't that something? <laughs> I tell you what. In my old general store, which reminds me of Elmer Goodrich's ten, general store in Hebron. Right there. That's the old store right there. Yep. Huh. And there's the elk. Over here, Santa, made out of old fur coats. Came from an Ackerman craft show. Where's this now? Right here. Yeah. Minky. Minky. Made out of an old mink coat. There's a lady that does those at the uh, arts and crafts shows. Uh, a lot of my birds were old family birds on the bird tree. There's those. The mercury glass ones there's with three the trees there. tails. They look like there's just one, but there's, there's three, three trees, trees there. there. Mm -hmm. And they all got all got birds, all three of them. And they all got birds. Yeah. And the birds. ladder oh, next door was actually given to me on my birthday from an antique dealer who found it because it had Anna Lee on it. 
and he's always picking up Anna Lee for me. These, which is a these things. collection that a lady started in a chicken house. These things are Anna Lee. To make money after her husband died. Huh. Beautiful. There are hundreds of them in here. Oh. Well, you know, each one of them has a memory yep. that it brings back. Oh, yeah. And a place and a time. Sure. It's sort of like us in a way. Yeah. Time. When was you born, Don? 1943. 1943? Uh, what month? For, uh, what was the hospital in Bellevue, uh, Dayton called? Spears. Spears, Spears Hospital. Hospital. Spears Hospital in the elevator, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it upstairs. I came quickly. And that was on what day? July, July 1st. July the 1st. 1943. So you're in 1943. You're 80 years old like me. Yep. I'm 82. I'm 80 years old, too. September the 4th. 1943. Really? Born on Wolf Road in Booth, Booth Hospital. In Booth. Yeah, Booth Hospital. Yeah. And uh, now, I don't remember Spears, now, but I remember Booth. Uh, Leonis, was you born in Booth Hospital? No, no, no. Yeah. I was born, born in, in Carroll County. In Carroll County. In a railroad section house. In a railroad section. You're a railroader. My father was. <laughs> I was a railroader. <laughs> yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. He worked on the Allen Inn. Uh huh. And yeah. I worked on the Allen Inn. Yeah. 1962, 63, 64. I would never have thought you ever worked on the railroad. I was a railroader, a switchman, and then yeah. I was a retarder operator, the very first one in the new yards in the old northbound hump. And I was a computer operator, uh, switching the cars out by computers, the very first person to do that. Wow. It was quite a ch challenge. A lot of history there on the Allen N Railroad. Yeah. My father worked there 30-some years on LN on what's called the southbound hump, and I worked there also. And my grandfather worked there on the southbound hump, and believe it or not, he was crushed between two cars oh. there and died there, right there on the southbound hump when my father was just five years old. So that was quite a tragedy for their family. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, But all three of us, Worked on the L and N Railroad, and <laughs> had that in a story. Yeah, and it's the most dangerous job I can tell you that I ever had. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it was a dangerous job riding them cars over the hills. I would think. And jumping on and off of them when they had brakes and when they didn't have brakes. <laughs> Dad was a gandy dancer. Yeah, well, he probably was one that did all of the gas pipes and everything, and uh, and built the yards down there. I don't think he did that. I think he just worked on the railroad. Did he just work on the railroad? I think well, he, he just worked, worked on rails, I think. He, he probably moved worked on between uh, Elliston, Kentucky, and um, mm, beyond Sparta. Uh, well, your older brother was Worthville, born Kentucky. Yeah, he was probably a, probably a conductor. In, no. Wasn't no, a conductor? Well, a no. iron man? He, he, he did the labor. rails and rails and ties and rails and ties rails and oh ties absolutely is that well, yeah, glendon was yeah. trust me that was life. a dangerous job oh yeah oh yeah. yeah glendon your older brother was born in the section house in, in ellison elliston kentucky and yeah darris was born on the farm yeah born on the farm after dad but had stopped working on the you railroad. were premature and weighed less than three pounds and put in a shoe box in the oven to keep you alive. Keep him warm. Yep, that's how I survived. Now your dad's name was Yule. Yule. I have to remember that. Yule. Yule. Another railroader in my past. Mm -hmm. And uh, dad's name was Alton Charles. Of course, mine was John Alton. John A. Oh, just John reversed. Alton. Yeah. His was Alton Charles, and he worked there his entire life on the railroad. And uh, the Smallwoods worked there. I had a lot of wonderful friends that worked on the railroad. I went on to be, in those three years, the secretary of the Brotherhood of Railroad Trainmen. I was their union representative. Yeah. And what was uh, Mabel Sipple's husband? He was Ross, the railroad. Ross Sipple, but I don't know what he did for the railroad. I, I think it was the same as your dad. I know, he just worked they for the railroad. They lived in a double railroad section house. Mabel and Ross lived on one side. And your mom and dad lived on the other. In Elliston. Yeah. In Elliston. Where my oldest, oldest brother was born. Now, you know what my mother did when I was a young man? 
living on Wolf Road, I never will forget. She took an old thing of stones, little blocks, old blocks of stone, and she made an arrow pointing toward the house, out in front of the house. And I thought, well, that's odd. Why is she doing that? And I didn't realize it for a long time till we'd be sitting at the supper table. Knock, knock, knock. Somebody had come to the door. Hey, Ma'am, I saw your arrow. She said, come on in, we're going to have supper. That was a signal to all the hobos that okay. rode the trains, our okay. people who were homeless, that they could come to this house there on Wolf Road and get a free meal. Huh. And I, as a young man, and my little sister Judy, remember watching people both on Wolf Road and on Martin Road, where we grew up later. My mom did the same thing, where we would have people come to the house and eat a free meal, and then they'd leave. And we never, for a long time, we couldn't figure out, well, are these kin folks? <laughs> of course, you know, me being the politician, I, cl I claim them all. <laughs> I tell you what, I've been wanting to get out here and meet with you guys. Anything else you want to tell me about that picture back there in particular? Uh, that is a copy of A Courier Knives. It hung over a, a guest bedroom of a friend of mine, and when I would stay over up in Ohio, when he downsized, he gave it to me. It was painted by a Indianapolis policeman who got hooked on drugs. It was part of his rehabilitation. Now, I didn't but I don't know who the policeman was. Huh. But That's it's a copy of Courier and Ives. Huh. That's sort of like the mirror that we have in our house. Uh, the mirror, I always call it the mirror that was a witness to the death. Because when I bought that mirror, it was in the house where somebody was tried in Boone County for murder. And that was the, 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 the mirror was a witness to the death. So I, I bought that at auction. Yeah. And I got it hanging at the house yeah. every time I walk by. I think that mirror has seen a thousand pictures, yeah. a thousand different words. And seen it all, <laughs> and the facts well, the of life. The mirror at Darius's was from the farm. Is that right? I don't know where it was hanging for sure. I think it was in one of the bedrooms in the old trailer. Mm. Time moves on, doesn't it? In other words, we mentioned Darius there. Darius's beach has gone on to heaven. Now he was a little young, younger than you, wasn't he, Lee? Uh -huh. Yeah. He was born in 1944. Yep. I believe. That's correct. And you were, and, and his birthday was September the 5th. 5th. Because I remember that because mine's September the 4th. Well. And, <laughs> and mine was 43 and his was 44, so he was a little younger than me. And uh, but, and a little younger than you. Yes, about five years. About five years. Yeah. And, uh, well. One now, of his class uh, school pictures is there on the far end of the coffee table yeah oh is that right i'll have to pick it up here because it's in black and white is it uh -huh. okay you can still tell it's Darius. oh yeah he, he... now that's Darius when he was a very young man mm -hmm. how old would you say i uh, i'd say he's probably in the fourth or fifth grade i'm fourth guessing fifth grade. yeah mm-hmm and he served in the army for four years. He was in uh, Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah. Uh huh. This is my older brother who married a girl in Munich, Germany. So he brought his bride back home with him. From Beautiful couple. Mm -hmm. And his name is. His name it was Glendon. Glendon. Now he's gone on to heaven too, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Several years ago. Yeah. Mm hmm. His Andy. name was Glendon Yule. My name is Noble Leondis and Darius Alden. Darius Alden. Mm -hmm. A-L-D-E-N. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and here I am in my mother's arms. Obviously, I'm a little tyke. I don't know. Yes, you are. A few are. months old, I and guess. And her name is? 
Ruby Claire Beach, Ruby Claire Webster Beach. Where, a lot of the Websters and the Beaches and the Binghams. I tell you what, you can't go anywhere in Grant County you no, haven't you heard can't. from them. <laughs> no, you can't. You cannot. No. It just, just can't happen. No. Now, who's this here? That tis I. That's you, and this is yeah. Liotis. Yeah. Get a little close up of that. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we want to go somewhere where we can sit down. Well, you can sit right there. Sit right here, okay. You sit right there. Well, we just have to get a close-up here. I think we can get down there and see it. Maybe you can. Right there. I get pretty handy with this little camera. <laughs> yeah, we got 74, 75 Christmas cards, yeah. Have it, tell them to watch that little step. There is a little step here, John, just a, just a small one. Well, I'm glad you tell. If you don't know it's there, it'll jar you. Yep. Well, particularly being my, in my older age, <laughs> my <laughs> abilities to be acrobatic are limited. Yes, they are. <laughs> now there are probably at least 15 trees in here, 15 plus, I would say, in this one room. Where's the best place for me to sit to sort of take pictures from the, the rocking uh, chair? Or? Well, you're going to have to get them from all from angles. All angles. <laughs> so I can't well, tell you. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Is there a straight that. chair? The smallest tree. I can get you a straight chair. If you can get me a straight chair, I'll sit out here in the middle and just turn the a little. The smallest tree is in the log cabin, oh. which is this one. Hang on just a second till I get that. <laughs> Chair. You, you haven't seen the log cabin that he built last year. I No, I don't think I did see that. No, you haven't seen that. Uh -uh. Sit it down right there, and then okay. I'll sit on that. You can pivot. I can pivot. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yeah, he's holding one of the smallest trees in the, in the house in his hand there. Let me give you this to sit on that chair right there. Okay. I'll use that later. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, one has to remember that one is old, and when you're old, <laughs> you, you have to watch your runny nose, <laughs> as they say. We've had what we're calling the hundred-day cough. <laughs> right. We've been coughing well, they, since... What they were talking about on the news. Since the first of December. They, they were calling it the 100-day cough on the news. And he had call, talked to his shoebox buddy, Peg, down at uh, Parker's Lake, because she was born uh, in 1939 in the north and put in a shoebox. So they were talking, and she said, well, I got the 100-day sniffles. <laughs> now, let me take a little look at that little. But this is the smallest Christmas tree. This was made by Lois Bigley, who belongs to a miniature society and makes the miniature trees that are in the Maysville Mu Dollhouse, Dollhouse Museum. Museum. Yeah. Fantastic. Watch little Santa on the front. Now, yeah, let's see how close we can get to that. It's got a little tiny Santa. There's a little tiny Santa at the base of the tree. Well, we'll take a little look at that. Now hang on just a second here. Let me get it. I'm focused. shaky. That's okay. I can't hold it still. I'm getting focused here. We'll be okay. We will be okay. I'm just now getting the Santa in. That's ah, beautiful. Let's get a little close up of the Santa there. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Praise the Lord. <laughs> And passing the ammunition of godly principles. Got it. Got it. And she made it for my log cabin. So my log cabin even has a little tree. That came in the mail. It was just a pile of sticks. Sticks, <laughs> that house was. Each one of these logs was a flat, long stick. And each shingle was individual in the kit. Now, isn't that just almost like building a house? Yeah, yeah. 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 He did that project last January, February, and March. Now, hang on a second. Let me get a little close up there. Inside. 
Oh, yeah, it looks authentic, too, doesn't it? It sure does. I'll tell you what. Of course, they'd have a hard time getting me in and there on one of those rockers. I mean, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit of beef. <laughs> As they say. And Lois, for Christmas, gave the little red bird I put on the birdhouse. Now, isn't that nice? I see the red bird right there. There is a... What kind of bird is that? That's a pelican. Pelican. That is a pelican up there and at the top. And guess what the pelican's nest is made from? My hair. Don's hair. <laughs> oh, now isn't that something? <laughs> that is something. <laughs> and you got the shingles there just like they are in the real building of the projects like this. Yeah. We also have this special house. The right outhouse. There, the outhouse. We got the outhouse. Yep. Boy, don't I remember those. We had two of them out on Martin Road. We didn't have one on Moffat, on uh, on Wolf Road. That, yeah. that house was built by Boss Beers, and it was a pretty modern little cottage. He did a really had nice job. indoor plumbing. Had indoor plumbing. Right at the top of this Wolf one? Hill. But it's now a two-holder. On, on Martin Road, oh, we had a two-holder. We had a three-holder. This one is. Had a three-holder. We had a three-holder. Yeah. Oh, mercy. Well, we uh, we had the old ice box out in the shed that you kept things cold with a block of ice. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. how you kept your food cold. That's behind the bar. Yeah. The is ice box right? is behind the bar. That's amazing, isn't it? Boy, oh boy. Yeah. That's what his mom and dad went to housekeeping with. Dad bought it from mom in 1926. And the phone on the wall is yeah. their original crank phone. Yeah. Now, where's that from at? the farm. Oh, yeah. The end of Absolutely. The there. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. You can still answer it, but you can't call out on it. Now, isn't that something? Let me get a little close up in on that. One. When you answer it, it sounds like an old Victrola. <laughs> yeah, you can see the phone underneath there. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Ah, yeah. Familiar? Familiar. Absolutely. <laughs> then all around the bar is some more of the collection of Anna Lee. All in here. Mm mm mm. Boy, oh boy. The day's gone by and the memory's coming up. You yeah. know, we stop and think. We pass life a little too quickly, don't we? Yes, we do. And we, uh, the trouble is, we don't take time to really... Enjoy it. Enjoy it, yeah. yeah. But now, folks, that's one of the reasons... It gets that, away from us and we don't really... <laughs> yeah. That's one of the reasons that we come out here is because... Uh, Don and Leotis are historians, and uh, they're history lovers. They both traveled, like I did, to all 120 20 counties in yep. Kentucky. Yep. And where I, I filmed the history and interviewed historians in every county, in 1987, we they, did, they did every courthouse, and they did the architecture of the courthouses. Mm -hmm and looked at it from a liter literary standpoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have to say, I've got that on my YouTube channel where I went through here one day sitting with them for what they probably thought, was that guy ever going to leave? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that was a couple of years ago. I know, it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I, I thought to myself, when I started, I thought, I'll never get through this. And I just... The more I did, the more I wanted to do, because it was like a gift from God. It really was yeah. seeing what you all had done, yeah. that, and seeing then going back and look at the history that I had done. Yeah. It really gave education and teachers something they could use yes. all the way from fourth grade yeah. to senior high school and to college. Yeah. If they really want people to learn about the culture, yeah. the ethnicity, the life, the Lord, everything was covered. Yeah. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white were all precious in Jesus' sight. 
And thanks to Leotis, Lee, and Don, we get a little look at the literature and the character of the architecture and the beauty of the architecture with all 120 counties around the state. Wouldn't you say that's accurate, Don? Yes. Yes, indeed. And we owe them a great thank you for doing that. I say that as a government, advanced government, and American history teacher, and having been the person that taught actually the first black history course in a public school <coughs> in Kentucky <coughs> in 1969 at Jessamine County High School, and then the next year at Erlanger Lloyd High School. What high school? Erlanger Lloyd High School. Erlanger and, Lloyd, okay. And at yeah. Jessamine County, and Erlanger was 1970. Yeah. And that was my first full year of teaching. And I taught American history in the Black Course History Unit and then advanced government to seniors. Yeah. But I, um, I'd have to say that uh, my greatest thrill was when I got the opportunity in 1987 to travel with my wife, Miss June, June Guyman Stevenson. I got to give her credit. She's the smartest move, Leotis, I ever made. <laughs> really? I mean, think about it. I don't deny it. I mean, goodness gracious. I'm right, aren't I, Don? Yeah. Smartest move I ever made. Goodness gracious sakes alive. She's strikingly beautiful, intelligent, a wonderful Christian lady, and I tell you, she's a workaholic. Yeah. She was. Well, maybe she would be with you. Well, she's over there working going through all the paperwork to help me and help us ah. in the uh, case for for Darius Beach and who you all knew that June and I took care of for eight years. Yeah. And it wasn't that the strangest of coincidences that there it sure was. in 19, 2014 there I sat with some other friends at the old truck stop. And here was this fella who was struggling. I could see him struggling with life. Yeah. And uh, I said, how are you doing? And I said, he said, not too hot, I think is what he said. Yeah. And I said, well, anything we can do to help you? And uh, he said, well, don't know. I said, what's your name? <laughs> he said, Darius Beach. Right then my eyes sort of perked up because the, the, automatically when you hear Bingham or Beach, right. when you're a Bingham or you're a Beach, yep. <laughs> your ears sort of go up, yep. you know. Sure, they you say, perk up. And you're sort of like, well, I wonder if this guy is any kin to the, the Binghams or the Beaches that in the family reunion. So I introduced myself to him, took his phone number and his name, and I said, let me come back down and see you and get with you. You're staying here right now, I take it. He said, well, here and in the truck. <laughs> and uh, his water apparently had leaked out all over the grounds, pipes busted, where the mobile home was, mm. the old mobile home that your dad had left him in a trust. And um, the mobile home in the little lot there at 1935 Gun Club Road. Yep. And... Uh, so I uh, I called my uh, my cousin Garlene Garlene Bingham. She's very active in the Bingham family reunion. I know, I know her. Yeah. And I said, "Are you familiar with a Darius Beach?" She said, "Well, not as a whole lot as I am with Lee mm -hmm. Beach. Mm -hmm. He's an educator, and she was an educator. Mm -hmm. She had nothing but compliments to say about you." Yeah. And I said, "Well, what about this Darius Beach?" She said, "I think he's got problems." And I uh, said, well, I, I, that's apparent to me right now. <laughs> but I said, but he is a, a cousin, right? He said, oh, yeah, that's Lee's brother, mm -hmm. younger brother. Yeah. And I, so I got a little history from her. And then, woe and behold, it was maybe um, a couple of months later, maybe a, maybe not a less, even a month later, the Robins were ha Robinsons were having a gathering. Mm -hmm. And there... You two set. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know at first that you were 
no. who I thought you was, right? Till we sort of bumped into each other, and I said, "Oh, yeah," this, and found out you were Darius's brother. Yeah, and I thought to myself, "This is sure a different genealogy." <laughs> it just was, because, in, in all honesty, you two were in a different world at, than Darius was at that time. Oh yes, yes. bless his heart. Yeah, alcohol. Yeah. Smoking, Cigarettes. and I mean smoking, he didn't just smoke, it was constant constant smoking, and, and it was apparent he had serious lung problems, you know, and so I found out more about him, and then I thought, boy, this is maybe be more of a challenge than I can take on, <laughs> and, you know, because like I said, I was actually older than him, yeah. and, uh, but since he was a cousin, it come upon me to think, and then when he told me he was a Vietnam vet, well, I had actually even led a demonstration and marched to the city uh, federal building, Don, over in um, Cincinnati with a bunch of students and the fraternity boys at Northern Community College when I went up there to school and was president of the student government. And I thought, well, now, I might not believe in Vietnam, what's going on there. I might not believe in the political sense, but those are our troops, and we should support our troops. Yeah. So I led a march over there in support of the troops. And uh, I had that in the back of my heart, and I thought, well, now, I've helped a lot of people since I was with Congressman John Breckinridge which was back many years ago in the 70s. Spent three years with him helping all veterans that came into his office. And he was a veteran himself. And of course in college at UK, I was in the ROTC, Air Force, a cadet policeman. So I had that experience. So I thought, why don't I go out and take a look at this guy's property? At this time, he was interested in thinking of trying to sell it somehow because there, he owed a big water bill. I think it was close to $3,000. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and the pipes were all busted. The roof was leaking on the mobile home so bad that it was just in water coming inside. And uh, all of the appliances were not functioning. The furnace didn't function. Uh, there was no hookup proper to the sanitation and everything. It was mm -hmm. sad. So anyway, I thought, well, I had some experience with mobile homes. I had lived in a mobile home, bought a new one, and lived in it at Lexington when I went back and finished my two years up at UK with my wife and children. And we lived there in imperial trailer courts. So I had some knowledge about mo mobile homes and, and how to fix them and how to repair them and, you know, and that sort of thing. And so... Uh, I took it upon myself then eight years ago, 2014, and I have a picture that I posted today, and it is a picture of about two feet high of files that I had on Darius, working with the VA, mm -hmm. working with all the other hospitals, the other nursing homes, the job hunting, the whole ball of wax. It was almost like he was really anxious to get help, and he was and he was sincere, but he could not handle the bureaucracy right. at all. Yeah. It just wasn't in his nature, Don, to do it. You guys have got that ability. Yeah. yeah. You both are just the opposite that way. I mean, look at what you've done here, and look at what you've done with traveling, with history, and with teaching. Yeah. My goodness gracious, it's just... A different world. Oh, yeah. yeah. A different world. And so he was in a different world. And he was angry. Angry yeah. at the world. Exactly. And that's one of the it hardest... It's always somebody else's fault. Absolutely. That's how he was. Mm -hmm. it, it was sad, but that's true. Mm -hmm. And you had to handle him with kid gloves. Or he, yeah. you know, he'd yeah. throw you to the wayside. Yeah. In fact, the, the one who got closest to him wasn't me. You know who it was? June. Probably. June. Yeah. My wife. 
because she had been a um, social worker at Good Sam Hospital first. She had been a hospice worker with Cincinnati Hospice. She had worked with uh, the Northern Kentucky Health Department as their first AIDS social worker, working with all the AIDS patients. What a job and a hard job that was. Ninety some clients, mm -hmm. just for one worker. Mm -hmm. It was a it was a job, and uh, <coughs> and then she worked before that with the health department or the uh, health part of the <coughs> Saint Elizabeth and Booth Hospital before they become all Saint Elizabeth. She worked there as a smoking cessation instructor. In other words, how to stop people from smoking, yeah. so and drinking. So she had those skills. Of course, she stopped smoking herself, <laughs> learned how to do it. And she stopped drinking herself. And, uh, but when she gave her life to the Lord, about probably about maybe six months, maybe a year before I met her in 1985, that's actually when I first met her. And it took me four years to convince her to marry me. I was patient. <laughs> Now, Don, that takes patience, doesn't it? <laughs> and and uh, so, anyway, I uh, uh, she, we got married. Well, I met her in 1985, July the 28th. Met her at the Charlie McKeever's restaurant. I might have told you all this. Yeah. Met her at Char Charlie McKeever's restaurant. But where was that? That was the old, that's, that's the place where the public house is now in okay. Fort Mitchell. Okay. Okay. And it, before that, it was, uh, I think, the Hearth, inn. Hearth? Hearthstone, I think, or Hearth, something maybe. Something yes. like that, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm there at Charlie McKeever sitting there having my supper, minding my own business, trying to behave myself. That's a challenge, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, up walks Pat Walker. Well, her name at that time was Pat Wallenzak, Pat, Pat Walker. Her father was a Mr. Walker who worked for me in Frankfurt when I was... Commissioner of Motor Vehicles. He worked down in there with us with Dr. Poor and I. So anyway, uh, she came to my office when I was with Congressman Breckinridge much earlier in the 70s. And she was a senior in high school. Her and the other girls, her friends, came into the office and said, Mr. Stevenson, we understand that you went to Simon Kenton High School. I said, yes, I did. I graduated from there in 1961. And she said, well, we were wondering, we, we were there and we want to have a girls softball team, but we need a sponsor. And I thought for a minute or two, now my brain was always thinking in those days, what's my next race? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was with the congressman for about three years and I thought my, I had an ultimate goal that I got from teachers at Simon Kenton High School and I loved them dearly. They were wonderful teachers. I mean, I, I can't tell you too much what teachers meant, but Mr. Faulkner, Mr. Caldwell, Gaynard Caldwell, Mr. Hinsdale, the superintendent, yeah. uh, Mr. Edmondson, the best superintendent and principal that oh, took over for Hinsdale. Oh, he was just unbelievably yeah. a good man. And uh, Miss Riley, uh, Miss Miss Wolf, Miss. Um, all the way down the line, Mr. Best, Gay Best, oh boy, all in what a math teacher, or algebra teacher. But anyway. Did so you know J.B. Losey? J.B. Losey was one of the best there was, still alive, I think. Yeah, he's still living. Still yeah. living. I, I call him every once in a while. Yeah. I'm, in fact, reminds me I need to do that. He's I need in a to... facility now. Oh, is he? I did not know that. Yeah, he had to leave the farm. Is he in hospice or just is? is no, it, just in a just facility. Just in a facility. Yeah. You don't know where he is. Dementia. Huh? I got his address. When we, before I leave, get it for me. Okay. I need to go see him and tell him hello and I love him. He was a great teacher, math or a t typing teacher and business teacher. Business, yeah. And he came to all of our reunions that we had. We just loved him. And uh, J.B. Losey, he went to a little Staffordsburg Methodist Church over there. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, that's right. And was always active in that church. Yeah. We went to their spaghetti. We went to their spaghetti supper. Is that right? Times. Yeah. Oh, how wonderful! Yeah. Time is time. <laughs> well, anyway, they walked into me. Here comes. I sponsored the girls' softball team. Got them uniforms, and I said, "Well, now, what's one condition on this?" 
I said, what's that, sir? I said, who gets to name this team? And they said, you're buying the uniforms and getting them made? You can name it. And I said, cool, we're going to call you Stevenson's Farmerettes. Now, you know why I did that? Because it was 1975, and I was going to run for commissioner of agriculture in the state of Kentucky. Yeah. That is God's honest truth. Yeah. So, and they were a championship team, Stevenson's Farmerettes. And I got in the race for commissioner of agriculture at the age of 30. I was a young, you had to be 30 to run statewide. And we hadn't had a statewide person elected from Northern Kentucky in 70 years wow. to any statewide office. So I thought, I want to break that ice. And would you believe it? I didn't, didn't, wasn't able to do it then. Couldn't do it then. Couldn't do it then. But I did gather signatures in every county in the state of Kentucky, all 120 of them, in a diary. And had everybody sign in that diary when I went from courthouse to courthouse. Still have the diary today. It's a historical document. And then I came back again and ran again in 1987. And this time I was going to run for state treasurer. And I thought, well, I'll get this one. And I'll be daggone if my mass mailing that I had lined up to go out all across the state didn't get out. I got called by the postmaster and said, John, there's some guy down here trying to mail this big mailing out on you. He said, if we mail it today, it's not going to get to anybody until after the election. <laughs> I said, do you want us to go ahead and mail it? I said, no, forget it. So I said, no, oh, June, my wife, she was traveling with me on this one. And we were traveling together, still not married. This is 1987. Yeah. And we're traveling 42,000 miles of driving, Don, in Kentucky. And we filmed the history, that time, of every county and the historian standing in front of the courthouses. And I thought, that's all I need to do. I don't need to win the race. This is the most important project I've ever been a part of. And so I was thrilled because we got that done and we donated a set of the tapes to every county library in the state and to the school systems. We donated it to the State Board of Education and to the governor, yeah. copies of it all. And I showed it all on, on public access for free. So it was a great opportunity to really do something constructive, just like the one you all did. And you'd be surprised the number of people that are watching your alls right now on my YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah they, they see it on there, and I promote it, <coughs> and they see it on YouTube, and it's out there on Facebook, too. You know, we've got 5,000 friends on one Facebook page and about, oh, 1,400 on the other Facebook page. But that uh, night, standing there at the Charlie McKeever's, when Pat Walker came over and said, Mr. Stevenson, I hope you don't mind, but I've invited a young lady to your picnic tomorrow. And I said, no, Pat, don't, don't worry. Invite anybody you want to. So I was eating my meal there at Charlie McKeever's. She said, will you we mind coming up here and meeting her? And I thought, oh, my goodness gracious, what's she going to do here? <laughs> so I walked halfway up that Charlie McKeever's, which is now public house, if you ever go over there, get a good meal. I said, and halfway up, I laid my eyes on her, and I said, oh, my Lord, good gracious, invite this lady in. <laughs> it's strikingly beautiful. Yeah. So I went over to the table where she was, and I immediately said to myself, now, John, pick up your best moves. <laughs> Swap and debonair. Use your political talents here. You've got it. Remember what your mother taught you. <laughs> so I'm up there talking to her and just saying how nice it is to meet her and welcome to come to the picnic and everything. Asking about her family background. She was a guyman. Every time you turn a rock over in Campbell County, you find another guyman another diamond. diamond yeah. <laughs> and so, and I said, uh, I said, may I have your telephone number? And she looked at me straight in the eye and she said, I think not. <laughs> I am telling you the truth. My tongue could have dropped about three foot low. <laughs> I think not. I think not, she said. And I said, well, now there I tried to regain, or you know, what, you, what, do, they, what do they call that? 
regrip yourself. Yeah. And, <laughs> and pick yourself up off the floor and say, start all over. Start all over again. So I picked up a Charlie McKeever's coaster. And I drew a little map on the back of it on how to get to the house there in Fort Mitchell, 127 Fort Mitchell. And uh, um, drew a little map, put my phone number on there, the date of the picnic and everything. And I said, now, come on to the picnic. No strings attached. You'll have a great time. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to meet you. So I went on up, gave her the coaster, went on up and sat down, finished my meal. And about the old 20 minutes later, I got up to walk out. And this is the truth. Right there out the door, I glanced over at her. She glanced back at me. Our eyes locked on each other. And she said, the Lord told her right then, there goes your husband out the door. <laughs> now, that's the God's honest truth. She told me that. And uh, I, now I didn't hear that myself. Right. But I did see those eyes. Yeah. And I thought, boy, there's a sparkle in those eyes. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, next day at the picnic, okay. here she comes. Of course, now Pat Walker had called her and encouraged her to come. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had to give Pat the credit there. I'll tell you what. She was a beautiful girl. Wonderful lady. And uh, still is. And so anyway... I'm there at the place, got about, oh, 70, 80, 90 people there at the house. Volleyball nets out, out up there, the badminton nets up. Here comes walking around the corner of the house, this beautiful, majestic lady. I'm over in the far corner and laid my eyes on her. Oh, my goodness gracious sakes alive, my heart started pounding, and I made a beeline to get right over to her. Would you believe I walked right into the volleyball net, tripped over a stool, fell on the ground like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> got up off the ground oh, God. and said, what do you like to do? Uh, she says, I like to walk. Uh, I said, let me have everybody's attention. Uh, We're going to be back in a short period of time. I'm going to take this young lady around and show her here in Fort Mitchell. So yeah. we left for, I guess it was three hours later. Here we come walking up Seville Court, and there it is, Virginia Courtois, the the flyer lady, bless her heart. She had a beautiful wishing well right there on the corner of her lot. I said, look up there at that wishing well. She looked up at the wishing well. I reached up and took her hand when she came back around, pulled her to me and gave her a big kiss. And I said, oh, Lord, this is the lady for me. <laughs> now, that's the God out is truth. And we were the, there was one lady still waiting there at the house. Everybody else was gone. And so she took her car, she left, and, she, and June took her car and went on home, and that's how we started dating each other. And uh, four years later, we married on March the 31st, 1989. And guess what? Two weeks after we got married, we took off on our honeymoon, and that was our trip through Europe, eight countries, and we filmed the whole thing including two communist bloc countries before the Iron Curtain came down, Yugoslavia and Hungary. We did Italy and Greece, Germany, and part of France, uh, all of Italy and Venice and, and Austria and Switzerland, yeah. and of course Germany. Did all of that. And the Greek islands. We did all the Greek islands. And that all is on Facebook and YouTube too. And that was our honeymoon trip. In fact, we've talked about that. We're going to sit down here in about a week or so and watch it ourselves again. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. bring back memories. Yeah. That's interesting, though, isn't it? Well, sure it is. Now, yes. that's something that, that I can say that we did that's similar to what you all did. And, it, and it's, it's something you, you think, how did we do all that? Right. I mean, you yeah. you all have got to think the same thing. Sure. How did you cover 120 counties? I mean, and do all of that, the pictures and everything yeah. that you did, and the writings, yeah. and the looking up the history. And I was still teaching back then. You were teaching there at Dixie Heights High School. And we got to mention something here, Don. Our buddy here, you know what he got. Got honored down there at Dixie Heights, the, uh, what, this past year. Yeah, yeah. Outstanding teacher in inducted into the Hall of Fame of yeah. Dixie Heights High School. Yeah. That's quite an achievement. 
I mean, really quite an achievement. <laughs> and they, they love you there. I guess they do. Oh, they do. The teachers love you. The students loved you. I've talked to a lot of them. Even my barbers loved you. And my barbers <laughs> went to school there. <laughs> you know, they're big Dixie supporters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, my brother-in-law, Jay, went there. Jay Brander, who I've cared for for many years. Wonderful brother, a World War II veteran on the USS Swanee on the uh, Battle of Leyte Gulf. Lost his best friend, Johnny Bianco, there. And uh, two kamikazes hit their ship. And uh, But he made it back safe, and he lived to be in his 90s before going home to the Lord. But he used to ride around with me and enjoy the yeah. trips I went on and things. Yeah. But uh, we had a good time together and met, made a lot of memories together. And um, and Darius, he was a challenge. Yeah, he I sure never, was. he was a challenge. Yeah. But you know something? When he gave his life to the Lord, Don, when he was in the camper, and uh, by this time, he was scared to death, frankly, scared to death of death. Yeah. And I never will forget. Uh, how, excuse me, I gotta go put yeah. another pad. Go I right have ahead. a monitor on in my go right ahead. just came on in my legs asleep. We'll, we'll catch you when you get back. You yeah, need my arm I'll a little be bit? back in a minute. Take care. But we we took and got uh, <coughs> um, the, um, I was trying to think uh, with Darius. Um, when I found out that his situation was through Garlene, was dire and very dangerous, and that he had uh, himself in a situation with, with uh, his smoking and his drinking, had no job at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the condition of the mobile home and everything was dilapidated. Thank goodness I had some connections back in those days. I was a little younger. And the realtors, which I belonged to, and have done, belong to for 51 years now as a real estate broker. They donated a thousand dollars to Darius, at my request. And then, and then later, when we and I used those funds plus other funds people gave us and workers, free workers, free helpers, other veterans that helped. We we took the old mobile home. We refinished the roof of it. We rebid the plumbing. Thank goodness Bill Wethington was uh, on the chairman of the board of the water district. I took our ask for mercy, <laughs> went to him yeah. with the, the bill that was owed, tried to, to get him to negotiate that, and they did. They did a magnificent job of trying to help. And then we got the pipes fixed so that the pipes were repaired, so we had running water. Got the furnace hooked up and repaired, and got the sanitation all hooked up. All that was hard work to oh, get it boy, done. Yes. It was hard work to get it done. And a, and a lot of people donated their time and then on and then when when his he needed a job desperately first thing I had to do was get him to the VA and he just would hardly not go at all. Mm -hmm. I had to actually physically take him or he wouldn't have gone. Yeah. So I went with him to the VA. I went with him to Cincinnati. I went with him to Bellevue. I introduced him to all the people, the wonderful social worker at Bellevue that that uh, started helping him in about 2014, 2015. And uh, I've got her name written down here somewhere, and I'll show it to you and tell it to you. But she was uh, she was magnificent, just absolutely magnificent. And uh, but she told me she said he isn't going to come unless you're going to bring him. You know, it's just a for in the beginning, I had to do it, and I did it as sort of a, a friend, but also a, I hate to say it, a, a boss. Yes. You know, because yes. uh, yeah. my, now my wife could be nice, but you know I'm spending a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of energy, yeah. and I, if I get these people lined up to help him, they don't want like being no. stood up. No. If you're you're asking for help, you got to be there to get the help, you know, and be a partner with it. Yeah. And so. He, he did really well, and it worked out, and we got him help for the first time. And I, I got him, June was so wonderful with him, helping him to stop smoking. 
because that took about two, about a year and a half, two years to get him to stop. And the same way with the drinking. I was going to say the drinking too. The drinking was just as bad. And um, uh, because if he'd get a dime, he'd spend it, you know. Oh, sure. And um, uh, so anyway, it worked out, and we got him uh, uh, into their program at the VA. We got him hooked up with oxygen later, and that was a major challenge, getting all of that done and looped into the system, and particularly with where he lived and everything. Mm -hmm. And then we he was having breakdowns. Okay, what's he going to do here? How's he going to make us a living? Where's he, where's he going to get the funds? You know, I can't keep playing for everything. <laughs> and uh, so finally I came to the point where, okay, um, let me fill out an application for you for a job. And I said, I'll do that on my computer at home. So I did. I filled out his application for O'Reilly Auto Parts. Yeah. And... Uh, that was in Ellesmere. That was in in Ellesmere, and um, uh, and they, um, I had filmed them some, doing their appreciation days, when they had it, because I do that to get my foot in the door. You help them, then they'll help me uh, help somebody. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, I was able to help him get a job driving a delivery truck. And uh, he had a little bit of experience with that, with Mills Fencing, where he drove the truck there some. But he lost that job because I think probably the drinking, and et cetera. See, I didn't know he worked for Mills Fencing. Yeah, he worked for them for a while, but his, his drinking, et cetera, yeah. created a problem there because yeah. of the driving, you know. Yeah. And um, so anyway, then I took and... and um, uh, got him with uh, the social worker, got him with the treatments, got him the medications. And then after about the first two and a half to three years, when we saw that the mobile home was just not going to work because I had it inspected, mold and mildew was so thick in it mm -hmm. from all that rain coming through the roof. It was all in the insulation, all through it. I walked all through it. I had the guy go through it. It, w it would cost more to do it than it was worth. Sure. Sure. So anyway, that's when we come up with the idea after he was back in the hospital again with COPD and congestive heart failure. And then um, we got him back and I said, well, Darius, we got two options. <coughs> One, with me being a real estate broker and having friends and, and have apartments, et cetera, things like that. I said, I can find you an apartment. And I did find him a nice apartment. One of the uh, fire chiefs and one of the cities lined me up with an apartment for him to live in, right there in Fort Mitchell. And it was a nice little place he could have gone to. And I said, and I had him at that time in a hotel because the mobile home just was too dangerous. So I said, now, Arf, if you want to, you've talked about this camper business. I said, I've got a guy that's a friend of mine that owns a camper business down at Walton. It's called Delightful Day Campers. Oh, yeah. And I said, the guy that owns it is Mike Bryant. And I said, I'll go talk to him and see if there's a, a deal he can make us on a camper that's been traded in that you can afford to get. And uh, so I said, what do you want to do, Darius? You know, these are decisions I can't make for you. You have to make yourself, and then I can help you fulfill them, but you're going to have to yeah. work at it. So he said, oh, I like the idea of a camper. And I said, well, let me go see what I can find out. Mike Bryant, I had to give him credit. He took the time as an owner and an old J.C. friend of mine from 30 years from the Boone County J.C.'s, which I was their outstanding young man in the county two years in a row and one of the outstanding young men in the whole state of Kentucky for the J.C.'s. And he, he lined us up with a camper practically at his cost that was a trade-in. I think it was about $7,700. Really nice coachman camper. And so, but we had to get it out there and we had to set it up. Now, first of all, I had to go through all the area planning commission and everything because you've got to do that, all that stuff to yeah. get to set things yeah. up. You know, it's a different world we live in. So I went through all the hurdles, got that done, got permissions. 
And then, thank goodness, the sheriff's department out in Boone County, the sheriff there, he have a veterans fund, and they gave us about $1,200, I think it was, maybe a little more, a little less, but it was over $1,000 they gave us to help get the pipes hooked up, to get the electric hooked up. We had to run the electricity. Another friend of mine, Larry Hensley, his son, Garrett, was an electrician. He came out and did the wiring at about half cost and uh, did it all for about uh, 1500 something like that. And we got the wiring all done, the boxes set up for the camper. Everything was set up, got the sanitation hooked up, got the water hooked up. It was a, it's, it was a monumental challenge. And uh, uh, so we got that done. I filmed all these things and put them all on Facebook and YouTube because I wanted to show what you could do to help a veteran. Mm -hmm. You can take these people that are desperate if you give them the right time of, time of kind of Christian help, you can turn their lives around. But you've got to be direct about it. Yeah. You can't be milly willy. You got to be a you got to be a boss. Yeah. And but you got to love them, and they got to understand that you love them. Lo I call it Jesus love. <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, uh, we got the camper all fixed up, and he moved into the camper, and loved it. Really loved it, and worked. Then he needed a truck to go to work in, and my little niece, Cindy, who had passed away, she had been burnt severely as a child, my brother's little daughter. And my brother was in the nursing home, and so June and I pretty well was taking care of Cindy the whole time and uh, finding her a place to live. And we found an apartment complex that we had her room all fixed up for her and everything. And, but she, she died and passed away and left the little truck to me. And I took and sold it to Darius at cost and let him have the little black pickup truck. He had all new tires put on it for him. He had an old blue truck at one time. An old time. blue truck one time was in terrible bad shape. Oh, it had to have Yeah, been. somebody bought it from him down there. And uh, it was, the last time I saw it, it was in bad shape. Bad yeah. shape, yes. It, was, it wasn't anything for him to be driving. Right. So anyway, I took and had him in the little uh, truck, and he had a good thing to ride back and forth, and he, everything worked Uncle Dory until uh, later when his lungs started giving up on him, even while he was driving. But in this meantime, he was a he was a student of perfection with saving his funds, and <laughs> with not drinking, not smoking, not being wasteful, and and believe me. Uh, he he did things very smartly. He I'm would let surprised. me. He would let me spin. <laughs> I'm su I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did fine till he left Joanne. When he when they were still together. When they were married. He yeah, was well, really sure, well. Yeah. Saving and he was everything. good, wasn't he? Yeah. And when he left her, it went went. He he turned to hating women. Boy, she was a beautiful girl. Yeah, she was. I met her, by the way. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. I did. Yes, I did. Joanne, her she last was a name nurse. Was Grubbs. I think her name. I think she was a nurse. See, I don't know. The, uh, I met her at the hospital one time, but I, anyway, um, he relearned how to do things the right way, and so he was he was very careful on how what he spent. This is the truth. Now, people don't know this. Because he didn't want nobody to know what he had. That's one rule he had. Yeah. Me and him. Yeah. And June, my yeah. wife. Yeah. And but nobody else. Yeah. Nobody at work. Nobody else. Made some people mad because I wouldn't tell them. Yeah. Because there are vultures in the world. That's what happened to him in the end here. Vulture. Yes. So anyway, he saved, believe it or not, at work, twenty two thousand dollars in Fidelity Investments, and uh, he had that over there. I was his power of attorney, and See, June... that's hard for me to believe that. He hard to me to believe that, actually, yeah. isn't it? No. $22,000, and uh, I was his uh, power of attorney, and June was his beneficiary, sole beneficiary on that. Of course, we haven't seen a penny of it. Uh, then he had another 12000 at least twelve, maybe fourteen, in the Fifth Third Bank, in a 401k that I helped set up for him with that bank. Now he about lost a big chunk of money because 
one time there, you know, he didn't even want me to know what he had. And so he took money out of the uh, company and put it into a, a checking account. And, I, and then he went to get his taxes done. And my son, who did his taxes for free for all eight years, because my son was the head of the revenue cabinet for Northern Kentucky. And he said, Darius, I said, you're going to owe taxes on all this money you've put into this company mm -hmm. that you took out of this 401k. Mm -hmm. And the guy called me up and I said, well, that was supposed to go into a 401k at the bank there. They were supposed to set that up. And so I said, well, let me get a hold of the bank and see if I can't get that corrected because Darius is not able to know what to do or what not to do. And uh, so anyway, I did. And I, my son said, Dad, I've been here about 20 years. I said, I've never seen that anybody else ever win an appeal with the IRS on this. And I said, well, let me try. And so... I turned in my appeal and I went to the bank. I got them to write the fact that I had the records that they were supposed to open up a 401k for him there. And I said, that was the bank's mistake. They should have done that and guided him in that. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, they wrote a, a thing saying that I was telling the truth. I never asked for no fees, no, no paybacks for doing it and, uh, for handling it for him. And so, uh, but we won the award, and he put it all into the 401k there. So he wound up not having to pay the taxes on that, and he had about twelve thousand dollars there in the 401k, maybe fourteen. So anyway, he had saved then because I had him a thousand dollars a month coming in for disability from Hartford, a thousand dollars a month coming in for long-term disability that I had signed him up for. Thank goodness I was handling all of his paperwork and everything, yeah. and I signed him up for that insurance. Plus, he had another close to $1,000 coming in when he was off that last year from Social Security. So he had that $1,000 a month coming in. Plus the fact that uh, he had, uh, from his job where he had saved, a total of about, uh, altogether about $60,000 in the bank account. Good Lord. $60,000 plus another $12,000 in the 401k. Now, I want you to think about that. Plus $22,000 that I know will be here for him. That's in Fidelity Investments from his work. So all of that was lined up for him. And then what I did was I took um, $53,000. This is after getting a new power of attorney to satisfy the bank. I already had the power of attorney but they wanted me to get a new one. And they wanted Darius to say that it was okay, and he did. And we got a new power of attorney, went out with uh, a notary public from a different bank, went out with two witnesses, had them, I had them even, the young lady, the notary, had her even read the power of attorney to Darius in the camper. And I filmed it all. So that there was a clear record of it every. And I showed that film on Facebook. So people would see that I wasn't stealing anything from him. And so anyway, that was all done. And then the checkbook was put in my name and his name. And I told the banker there, I said, now, the first thing I talked with Darius about when he gave his life to the Lord and I accepted this responsibility was there were two things I told him. Number one, I'm not going to lie for you. If you go to a nursing home, I've got to tell them the truth of what you've got, where it is, and the property that you have, and what you owe and what you don't owe. Going back five years, that's the law, federal law. And I said, so if you go to a nursing home and you think they're going to sign you up with Medicaid and you don't have to pay, you're wrong. And you can't lie about it because I won't let you. And I'm not going to lie about it. So there's one place I have found you can go to. It's called Ivy Knoll down in Covington, but it's I've heard of it. right in, right in, when you go down the expressway, you see a it's big sign right. that says on the right, mm -hmm. out the tower, it says Ivy Knoll. Yeah. I went down and filmed that whole place, every room of it, where you can be and where you can't be, the cafeteria, the activities room, interviewed people and everything, put that all on Facebook, showed it to Darius, and I said, now, if you have to leave the camper, and I had him in hospice at this time, and I said, if you have to leave the camper, 
you can go to this place first and only pay about maybe thirty-five hundred, four thousand a month, even if it's a little more. You pay it, and I'll pay it for you out of my escrow account. I'm a real estate broker. I have an escrow account I can use. So I took fifty-three thousand out of the sixty thousand and put that into my escrow account under my name, under the escrow account. And I told Ivy Knoll that if I bring him over there, I'll be paying for it out of my escrow account. Because if he stays there at Ivy Knoll for maybe, say, three or four months, maybe even five or six months, you know, hospice is only supposed to be six months. Yeah. But sometimes it's longer. But now palliative care is different. They won't take you. Their doctor won't take you. And they wouldn't take Darius because I tried to get him in there when he was in the VA hospital. They said no. The doctor said no. He doesn't qualify for three months or less. You have to qualify for three months or less of life. But once you go there, then you don't have to pay him anything. He could have gotten that free, see. So that was my plan and my strategy. Go to Ivy Know if you have to. I'll pay it for you there. Or if you have other bills, I'll pay them. But, and then you can go to the VA because I had already lined it up. Well... Uh, well, where did Bill Price come to in, well, get into all of this? He got into it because, number one, um, he lived down the street on the little side street that comes off of the main drag. He has a little section there that he lives on that goes to Gun Club Road, which is where Darius lived. Well, he was, the uh, only way I met him was he was running for, um, what do you call it, uh, Oh, uh, some kind of a position in Boone County called the constable. constable. He was running for constable. Okay. Wound up getting beat about two to one, yeah. but still he was running. And Darius said, can you help him a little bit? And I said, well, I'll try. So I even went down and filmed a little thing for him because he was having a little rally of some sort campaigning. So I filmed it and put a little information on it and posted it on Facebook for him. And the price is right. And that's what I'm calling him now. The price is right. It's because the price is right. He's found out Darius had money, and he decided uh, he had a claim to it. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, uh, I'd not, I've, in the eight years I helped Darius, I'd never seen him lift a finger to help Darius, period. If anything, he caused problems for Darius because he dug ditches and potholes in the road in front of his house where he lives down there to try to keep the the gun club folks from being able to get into the gun club meetings. Good Lord. And he had them all mad at him and mad wondering if Darius was part of that too. And he wasn't. Darius wasn't part of that. And so now the lady that has a gun club is a very nice, honest lady. But she can't stand the man, the man I call him the price is right. But anyway, um, so I, uh, I took Darius underneath my wing and and helped him all those years with all of those things. I'll show you later a little picture of the stack of files I have on him. And uh, because I had, had to do them all. We will take a little break here. Now this is the farm where you grew up, uh -huh. this Lee. Is, this is at Folsom, Kentucky. Folsom, Kentucky. Yeah. Now that's where Darius grew up also? That's where Darius was born. Darius was born in that house. Uh-huh. In 43. Uh, we moved there in 41, and of course I was born in 39, so I really don't Darius remember. Darius was born in 44. Darius was born in 44, yeah. And, and I, the cross cut saw is from the farm. This this saw here is from the farm. And Boy, that's one of them old, the, old ones, the two, per, two person saw. The two huh? person saw, yeah. It has the train. On it, the yeah. railroad that you'll work for. Ellen in. That was my daddy's saw you got there. And that one no, no, has no. the train that no, you'll. This is dead. With the this... Louisville and Nashville at each yeah. end of the saw and the train in the middle. And the girl that painted it went back and found pictures of the logo of the the years his dad worked that they had on the train. How the sides of it were painted and so forth. 
that was my dad's hand saw. That's your dad's he hand saw. Deer hunting, so I had yeah. it painted by the same girl that painted the other one. And do you remember her name? Farmhouse. Do you remember the person who painted this? Yeah. Yeah, her name was Brenda Fort Huber. Okay. In Shakespeare, Shakespeare Ontario, Ontario Canada. Canada. Is that right? That's where she lived. We took the saw blade up there and left it. We, when we, were go we went up there 30 years consecutively to the Shakespeare Theater. And we took the blade with us one year and left it. And then she painted it during that winter. And then we went back the next summer. She had it ready for us. That is amazing. Because she had already painted the cross cut She ball. was charging me $50 to paint it. But when I got back the next year, she said, I've got to charge you $10 more because she said, my husband had to sandblast that saw blade before I could even paint on it. Isn't that something? Yeah. Huh. So and I paid her $60 We thought for that. that it would be a, a lot more expensive. Than yeah, that, I, so. I think you got a deal there, Lee. I think so. <laughs> well, listen to this. This one here. She had done such a great job on that. We took this up there to her and left it again. Picked it up the next year. She said, I can't do that for $60 because it's uh, it's such fine. That's a lot of work. <laughs> it's such tiny work. She said, how about 80 I said, if it suits you, it suits me. Ah. So she did this one for 80 And it's got the... Uh... L and N, Louisville and Nashville Railroad at each yeah. end. Yeah. Oh that is and she neat. She looked up during the years his dad was on the railroad to make sure that the logo on the train matched. Now isn't he that He started neat? working on the railroad somewhere in the twenties, but I don't know what year. And he worked until nineteen forty one when he quit. And then he started farming totally and no more railroading. So that's some of the yeah. family heirlooms in a way. The clock was the uh, yeah, the clock you can tell them about my great that. great grandfather's. That's the clock that's up there. Uh huh. Uh huh. It still works. It's just run down. I have. Yeah. I don't keep it wound. I've got an old one similar to that. Yeah. 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 Bless your hearts. And all the books. All the books, most of which I've read, some I haven't. And they're in but alphabetical order. Most of those were given to me by people through the years. A few of them I bought, but not, not many of them. What about the stuff inside the cabinet here? The clown case? That's all clowns there. That's all clowns. But you have, you like given, clowns. Given to me through the years. years. Like you like red birds, that's why the, there's a lot of red birds. Yeah, I like red birds, and you'll see a lot of those around here. And I like clowns, and you, that whole case is nothing but clowns. I'll be daggone. Yeah. And everything be around the room. Yeah. Red bird lights, red bird figurines. Mm-hmm. Now this tree over here, the wall tree, <coughs> it's got Russian dolls on it. Huh. Russian dolls. Russian dolls, yeah. Now what brought that bat about? Uh, Don can tell you what brought that about. Uh, my ex collected dolls and she loved the little Russian dolls and collected them and when she died the girls didn't want it, so I took it. And it's all Russian except for the one on the bottom, and that was Cheryl's little China doll when she was a little girl. Huh. And the red birds? The red bird was a gift from uh, Polly to Lee. The big red the bird. The great big one here? Yeah. Polly. That was done yeah. by a student. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many students did you figure you had, Lee? Hundreds. Literally hundreds. Hundreds. Right? I don't know. I would have no way of, no way of knowing. Uh, one of them that was a student of mine in the eighties. 
he was here during the holidays. He came in from Renton, Washington to visit his parents who live in Fort Wright, and he came to visit us one afternoon. Oh, how was it? Remember his name? Robert Lindsay. Oh, Robert Lindsay. Robert Lindsay. Well, happy day. That's wonderful. Yeah. That is wonderful. I, I always enjoy running across my farmer students. Well, of course you do. And uh, yeah. you feel... They like, know us, yeah, right. but we can't remember who they are. That's true. They know us, but we can't remember who they are. Anything in particular in this corner over here? I don't think there's anything unusual in that corner, is there, Don? The trunk is an old, old yeah. thing, but you can't see it because of all the stuff on it. Well, the snowman came from an artist in Metamora. Yeah, Dorothy Humbarger gave us the snowman. A very dear friend <coughs> that has passed on. <coughs> She's gone now. Hmm. <coughs> mm -mm -mm. Uh, I don't even remember the artist that did my Captain his, Cute his, picture. Uh, That's the way I looked like when I was still doing art shows. That was done in Tennessee, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one above is Redbird Mission done by, again, Dorothy Humbarker. Redbird Mission is down at... Uh, Oni near Oneida, Kentucky, if you know huh, where that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Only I tell you. That's and the log cabin that was moved. It originally was the toll house on the Cumberland Gap. Yeah. It was moved to Redbird. The Christmas throw on the back of the couch, that's another one of Don's. Creations. Creations. This is the cushion here and the throw on the back of this chair. Don did those. Those are ties. Those are, yeah, men's ties. This is all made out of men's ties. Made a crazy lap throw. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Now, you already took the cabin, did you? This is known as the redbird tree. Now everything on there has got to do with got redbirds. Got yeah. redbirds. Uh, every ornament has something to do with redbirds. Fantastic. They're beautiful. Showing aren't they? your crazy red nest you got from Norma Jean. I didn't put it in a tree. I think it's got a redbird sitting in it. It's got a big redbird sitting in it. It's got a cute little verse in it. Read the verse that's inside. I can't get to where I can <laughs> see it, Don. He's got a bird's nest in your Christmas tree. Happy, healthy, prosperous, you always will be. Enjoy this sweet little nest for your Christmas tree. May the legend come true and be a blessing to you. Okay, now in the very beginning, what was how did it start off saying? Uh, legend of the Christmas Bird's Nest. Legend of the Christmas Bird's Nest. Yep. Well, yeah. there it is. There it is right there. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, you're putting up one now. They're Annalise. They're Annalise. Annalise. That's on all the drawers there on the shelves there, right? Yeah. Oh, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Everywhere. And they're called Annalise? <coughs> Annalise. A-N-A-L-E-E. -E, Annalise. That was a Christmas gift from Polly last year. Here. Beautiful. He now, and Karen went to school together. Now tell us what that is. That's a Santa reading to the kids, isn't it? That's what it is. Santa reading to the children. Yeah. Yep. There's an Annalie down there under the tree. Yep, there are two Annalies down here that he got for Christmas. Beautiful. Three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Now... Two and three, one, two and three. 
I think you got us. I think I got the three of us right there. I think the you three did. musketeers. Yes. Yes. That's Don and Lee and Big John. John. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, oh, life has got its funny. Don, did you put that together? I I, I fired it, cleaned it, glazed it. I used to have a kiln. Sure that is it. absolutely beautiful. My niece took uh, the one that's in color. She wanted to keep it as a family heirloom. So pass it on to the next generation, which just got married, her daughter. Mm. And the cards in the doorway. I collect Santa and Mrs. Claus salt and pepper shakers. And a lot of them, they're kissing Mr. and Mrs. There are Sanders. 38 pairs in this room on each side of the chi big china cup. Straight across over there is a bunch of them. <coughs> there are some more of them. Some of them are in here and some are over there. And again, more red birds on joy, believe, love, peace. Beautiful. What's the other word that's there, Lee? It's peace. behind me. Peace. 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 Okay. Yeah. And what's the one back there in the back? The hanging tree, the wall tree. It's yeah. angels. Angels. They're Who all are? handmade, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And made angels. Beautiful. And my cobalt collection. There's nothing unusual about any of this here. The only thing unusual is that it's nothing unusual. <laughs> there's, there's everything else is beautiful, <laughs> unique. Including Brother Don and Brother Lee. <laughs> Very unique. <laughs> and you might want to get that chandelier. Absolutely. Beautiful. I decorate everything. This would be probably the last year for this much. Yeah, this is the, the last last year it. for all of this stuff. Yeah. Next year, made little we'll be like crochet a tree. village and plastic up there. Beautiful. That again? <laughs> it looks like that would be a good baby spoon. <laughs> I tell you what, that's a big one, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, mercy. Mercy sakes alive. <laughs> I could say I'm a nitpicker. That's right. <laughs> that was a Christmas gift. Oh, Because wonderful. of my cobalt. Wonderful. Good Lord, yes, there's stuff everywhere. Yeah. Pretty. Lots of co of uh, blue, blue and white. Cobalt. Blue and white. Look at the shelf up at the yeah. Cinderella collection. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. My blue willow came from my grandmother. Beautiful. Beautiful. The thing about it, most of the stuff in this house we did not purchase. Yeah. They were gifts to it, our it family. It was given to us by who knows who. So many people. Well, this it's beautiful. Was, uh, his roommate's wife's uh, clock. Down in Georgetown. Georgetown. And when Audrey died, her husband gave it to Lee. Beautiful. The uh, canister set there that says sugar and coffee. Yeah. Those were my sister-in-law's. Oh, wonderful. And you gotta, you gotta get the uh, bedroom. Gonna walk you to death now. Yeah. This was given to us. 
by a friend of ours. That was from Jerry. Yeah, that was from Jerry Clay. Yeah. Did he get our crazy rooster wagon? I don't think I said anything about it. He can get it on. I've never seen Santa before pulled by a rooster. Right there. Oh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> How neat. Yeah, there can't be display. 